What's up, nerds? This is Bibs, and today I want to break down a future best track that I've been uh, working on. Technically, it's just a drop, but you know, once you get the drop done, um, everything else is pretty much just arrangement and automations. So, uh, the main concept uh, that I wanted to show you is this group over there called Wall of Sound. And it's uh, something I came up with recently and that I've been, try uh, I've been using more and more. And um, so, uh, I was struggling to get a uh, edgy, very compressed, typical EDM sound. So, I figured I would group uh, the kick, the snare, the bass and the chords into one group compress that heavily and leave everything else uh, uh, um, routed directly into the stereo. I'm just going to show you. So this is the wall of sound group. All right, and then I'm going to mute that group and you're going to see everything else that's going straight into the master. All right, and both together. All right, so you're gonna notice that uh, everything that's not going into the wall of sound are the sounds that are more subtle and uh, with more reverb because since that wall of sound group is heavily compressed, uh, hi-hats, for example, uh, they're too um, fragile, you know, and they would, like the tails, for example, they would come up way too much if it was going into that group. Uh, in that group, I have a OTT multiband uh, compressor, very popular among uh, dance music producers. Uh, it does a great job at it, but I'm getting a little bit tired of that sound. So by the way, if you know any uh, altern alternative um, compressor like OTT, uh, let me know because I'm looking for one. Uh, I did some research, but I couldn't find any decent one. So let me know in the comment below. So that's the wall of sound group. So again, kick, uh, snare, uh, uh, chords, uh, super sauce, and bass. By the way, you're gonna notice that I have a lot of groups and subgroups. That's because I'm a little bit OCD, and uh, for example, even if the in this track I only have uh, one uh, kick layer, I like to have it go into a kick group anyway. So it leaves me the option later on if I want to add a layer, that layer would go straight into that kick master. Um, speaking of the kick, <clears throat> or for any kind of one uh, shot samples in, for the matter, I use uh, Phalanx. Uh, that's a great sampler, uh, which is not very popular. Uh, and I don't know why. I think because it uses an e-licensor, so it's not, you can't really find it on torrents and it's not uh, pirated. And, uh, but, you know, it's a shame because it's a very flexible one. Like the volume envelopes are super flexible. You have filter envelopes, uh, you have modulation envelopes, and uh, all, all the other uh, basic features that you would find in a um, uh, sampler. So that's what I use for the kick. And uh, in terms of inserts, I have uh, M stereo scope. And this one, I actually did a tutorial about this. My very first tutorial that I made, it was called uh, Anatomy of a Kick Drum. So this little plugin allows me to pick uh, one, the left or the right channel, because most of the time when you use a sample from a library, for example, that sample will have already stereo uh, data uh, printed to it because it's audio. So uh, picking the left or right channel uh, allows me to uh, make it mono again, as opposed to merging uh, left and right uh, together into one channel, which uh, most stereo to mono plugins do. Um, so that's what I do here to make it mono. Then I add my own uh, reverb. Well, you're gonna say reverb on a kick, but it's technically actually mostly for the early reflections, all right? So it's not fully mono, it has a little bit of an ambience to it. Actually, I should even uh, bypass completely the reverb and keep only the early reflections. All right, then I have a little bit of EQ. Probably not doing too much to it. Yeah, it was a little uh, heavy on the sub uh, frequencies. 
Below, I have snare, uh, snare, exact same principle. You know, a uh, good sample and then M stereoscope, uh, true verb and filter. So I'm not gonna go again through that. Then I have my chords, uh, my beloved diva that I use for almost every time I'm using a super sauce. And I'm jacking up the high frequencies with a uh, multiband distortion by Vengeance. Again, a great plugin. It's same company as Phalanx, so for the same reasons, it's not very popular, uh, which is a shame. Yeah, you should definitely try it out. I think they have a two-week uh, triad on the on the on the website, as long as you have a e license to dongle. All right, uh, then below, I have another, I think it's pretty much the same chords. It's probably the exact same copy, but it's uh, triggered by another plugin. Uh, this one is called Lush 101. Where is it from? From uh, D16 Group. And I'm using this one, uh, this VST only for this purpose, which is layering super saws. Uh, I don't, there's something about the tone that I like that is adding. By the way, you're gonna see me looking up over there. That's because I have another monitor where I have a couple of analyzers that I use to look at the different dynamics of the track. Also for the stereo field. And for the frequency spectrum. All right, so over there I have two different instances and one is set to the tab on the scope and the other one to the tab of the uh, stereo field. Um, okay, so in the chord group, you can hear there's a little bit of a vibrato and uh, that's the automation for the vibrato. And I like to have it, to have the vibrato on the actual group because um, if I were to trigger it with the module, let's say on the synth, since I'm using two different plugins, it would be almost impossible to get the exact same um, pitch movement. That's why I'm using just the stock plugin from Cubase. All right, and this is a uh, filter cutoff automation. Let me see, make sure. Yeah. And below, <coughs> we have uh, power chords with Diva again. So the purpose of this is to give uh, some crunchiness, kind of like an electric guitar. So it's basically the... Um, the root and a fifth above with a lot of distortion. All right, and with that distortion. All right, quite different, right? And all, so all these power chords and the two uh, chord MIDI um, events are going into that group chords. All right, down below, we have the bass group. And in the bass group, we have um, this guy here. So at first sight, you may think, um, is that like, it looks like chords, but in reality, is just uh, harmonics that I'm adding manually. And I'm talking about this into this other tutorial that I made. It's called uh, the perfect sub bass. And I'm going more in depth about it if you want to know more. But in a nutshell, what it is, is uh, the root and also an octave up. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes a fifth uh, in between. And every uh, little note has different velocity. So you can really have different balance of the harmonics for each note, all right? Below, all these guys, little, little guys. So 
So that was me playing the bass, but I'm not a great bass player. So what I did, I played all the notes that I needed for this project and I tried uh, different ways of uh, pinging, picking it. So picking, slapping, uh, you know, using different strengths and whatnot, and then approaching it as if I was uh, sampling uh, someone else. All right, so let me play, actually let me play the bass and the drums together. Okay, now below I have my high stuff uh, group. I always have a group in my projects called high stuff and that's where I group everything that's percussive and high frequency uh, content. So there's a hi-hat, straight up hi-hat, and of course I'm using phalanx. Uh, all right, so this is just a one shot on the upbeat. And below, Uh, so this, I needed something more alive because there's uh, uh, some uh, kind of a groove to it and uh, all the different notes are, are being have a different velocity. So I'm using, for this purpose, I usually go for Addictive Drums too. And same thing, I'm going to refer you to this other tutorial that I made and it's called uh, Three Ways to Better Your Grooves and I go a little more in depth in, uh, about Addictive Drums. All right, and below we have... Okay, that's just the open hat. <clears throat> All right, and uh, of course, so that high stuff uh, group is, is going straight into the stereo, is not going into the quote unquote wall of sound, otherwise uh, those hi-hats would be, uh, they would completely disappear because of the edginess of the super saws. Now, below we have what I call organic keys. And for the exact same reason, this is going straight into the uh, master. I mean, pretty much the super saw that takes so much uh, space, I mean, they fill the whole frequency spectrum. So everything else that you put with a lot of distortion along with the super source is gonna disappear because of the masking effect. So this is also going into the uh, master. And it's it's not the exact same copy of the super saw chords. I did a different voicing to really uh, fit the track, but I believe it's electric, yeah, electric piano. with a little bit of a passing notes and a regular piano. All right, and the electric piano is with Lounge Lizard and the piano is with uh, Halion Sonic, which is the stock uh, sampler from Cubase. Below, uh, there's a group called Lead End. I'm assuming that was meant to be at the end at first, but then I placed it in the middle instead. And this is... Uh, this is the exact same um, MIDI clip, but one is the uh, electric piano, and the other one is actually the same electric piano, but with a lot of distortion. So if I mute the inserts... All right, sounds like, a, to make it sound like an electric guitar almost. Below, uh, there's a group called Funky Keys uh, and that's a phased. Okay, so that's a Spire <clears throat> and that's uh, Hellion Sonic again. And I'm using Phase Mistress, which is an amazing uh, phaser. If you're making funky mu music, I highly recommend it. Uh, same, I I've tried a lot of phasers and this one uh, is the best by far. So uh, by Sun Toys, I'm sure you know of it. Uh, below orchestral hits, and uh, these are layers of brass uh, by uh, Nexus, uh, Hollywood 3 uh, pack, that's very good uh, pack for anything that's uh, orchestral. Then we have strings. And more strings. Which I probably didn't need, but it's there anyway.
All right, below we have drum fills, and for the drum fills, I'm using also addictive drums. So I'm using, pretty much I'm using addictive drums either for hi-hat grooves, uh, fancy grooves, and also for fills. And um, it's just practical because you can have, let's say, uh, some templates as, uh, I mean, some patterns as templates, and then you can just switch the samples. Um... All right, actually doesn't sound that great uh, by itself, but it, it works in the track, so. Then we have uh, a lonely tom here. <coughs> All right, so that's probably phalanx. Yes, it is. And it's, uh, I don't know, I probably sampled it from somewhere. And below we have a group uh, called Chops. All right, so that group is pretty much uh, miscellaneous. There's all kind of stuff. It's like uh, uh, what doesn't every every element that doesn't really fit into the major uh, groups, you know. So it's not keys, it's not lead, it's not percussion. It's like usually vocal chops or uh, sam sampled parts. For example, yeah, vocal chops. That's uh, so. There's definitely phase. Okay. So in this case, I think I sampled, uh, I made into, I rendered into audio uh, the keys and I'm passing them through Face Mistress to give it that uh, funky uh, tone. And also, I went. I wanted to see if I'm actually having a volume automation. You know, when all these, all, th all these little parts are happening, I usually have a volume automation, so they really pop out. For example, I will most likely do this. I don't know why I didn't. Maybe I have like a bass. Yeah, I have these little guys. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, writing can get uh, complicated sometimes. So then, right. Okay, and then below ending, so that's the big, well, the big, it's just like a little build up here at the end. So that's a bounced reverb and yeah, bounce reverb and uh, re reversed. And this below here, so that harp sound, th that harp sound is actually a bounce of this audio here. But I wanted, so that uh, MIDI pattern is following exactly uh, the grid and I wanted something that kind of speeds up as it goes. And I feel just more comfortable doing it in audio. That's why I bounced it into audio, so. You can see if I open the audio file, you see audio warp. All right, so I guess originally it was something like that. So I'm up, swing down at first. All right, and below, disco chops, probably from a disco track I sampled a while ago. All right, uh, I guess that's it for this one. Um, this is the first time I'm doing this kind of format. It's a li little longer than my usual videos. Just to try it, let me know if you like uh, these formats and um, if you want me to do more. Um, if you do, I'm most likely gonna do one on let's maybe like hip hop instrumentals or something uh, like an indie funk. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.